What is going on, everyone's, everyone's, everyone's? We are here. We are back with another episode of Is My Point Valid? Yes, indeed. We back in this thing. As y'all know, we come to y'all every Monday with a hot new topic. So today ain't nothing different. Nope. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it with uh, what you know good. So, baby, what you got for him today? All right. Um, What you know. <laughs> I had a blank moment. Um, What you know good. So I finished that audio book called Hood Feminism, Notes from the Women That a Movement Forgot by Mickey Kendall. Um, it was overall a good read. Um, uh, but one thing that I didn't like, it was like she was trying to educate white feminists on how a black woman's world works. Like, hmm. if you know how feminists, white feminists work, they kind of fought for them. And then when it came to women can vote, and white women can vote, black women can't. So you can't, it's, it's, I read these books to try and get an understanding of, you know, the feminists. I don't know if I'm a feminist. I don't call myself a feminist. Like, I don't, I don't know, right? But I try and get an idea of what it is. And it's interesting to see, you know, what black women go through. We may have gone through the same thing. But when I, why I question this book is like, why do we, why does it have to be hood feminism? Like, why couldn't it just be, black feminism and what you deal with because of course as black people we all come from different areas but some I ain't come from the hood like you get what I'm saying so some of the thing and I didn't grow up in Chicago the way she did I grew up in Houston Texas so that's two different yeah things right there but the question for me and then I'll move on is why do we keep trying to explain ourselves to the opposite our counterparts. Our counterparts. Why do we keep trying to explain it? I get it. They need to understand. But why do we keep trying to have them meet us halfway? No, nah, meet me the meet me the whole way. And my thing is this: if they wanted to understand, they would already, they would already understand. understand. And then when I read the reviews, it was a lot of white women, and they're saying this needs to be in schools. No, it doesn't. Nah. It this the book doesn't need to be. And I'm not knocking the book at all. It was a good listen, but it's just like I am tired of this. Of this, of this conversation, hmm. um, how can we make the steps that we need to do with, and like, can we do it without depending solely on white people, or in this case, white women, to try and feel what I'm saying? If you, if you're a woman, you should understand. I'm a woman, but they don't see, they don't view that. They see the, they see. It's color first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But. Um, it was a good listen. Uh, yeah, good listen. <laughs> good listen. Move right along. Right up next. I, I, I have a special person here who has read a book. <laughs> I'm reading a reading. book. Okay, you're reading. Who's uh, the book is called Launch, and I'm actually reading it uh, on an app. The same app you to use. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Yo, um, it is a book, uh, it's by Jeffrey Walker and it's, a, um, a creator of product launch formula. So it teaches you how to, um, put your package together and how to present it to your clients in order to, um, have a zero to a hundred business mm -hmm. and, um, the least amount of time as possible. Got it. So that's what that book is about. Uh, like I say, it's called Launch. And it's by Jeffrey Walker. Um, and it just gives you uh, the secret formula to sell almost anything online. Build a business where you love and live the life of your dreams. So that's the goal. So I figured this book would be uh, beneficial to my goals. Absolutely. Any reading is beneficial to your goals. It may be beneficial to your goals as well. Because oftentimes we don't know how to present our products or services. So... This will shortcut you on that process. Reading um, reading and listening to things help, uh, I think, build your brand. If you look at all these billionaires and millionaires, 
they didn't get there by not opening a book or in not writing notes yeah. and not like speaking what they want. So mm-hmm. if that's where you're trying to get, let's open up these books. I'm giving you recommendations. Brandon's about to give you some recommendations. Take heed. Um, and it might not be these books that we're reading, but I hope that this sparks, sparks your, 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 yeah. Like, ooh, let me go read me a five mm-hmm. page story. I ain't going you know? nowhere in the last two years, so let me read a book. Let's read a book. And f- Let's find out book. how to uh, get my feet moving. Let's make this grow. You know we already got big brains. Let's make it bigger. Yeah. All right. So the last thing on my um, What You Know Good is um, on Saturday, um, on Saturday, we had the homegoing celebration for my Uncle Butch. Shout out, Uncle Butch. Um, that <laughs> this one is tough because it's it's uh, it's it's Uncle Butch. If you come in contact with him, you feel the love. Um, I just remember every time we would have a family function, we walk up. It was meal meal. It was, you know, it was that love and seeing how everybody felt that love from him. Everybody had a nickname from him. I can give you all the nicknames that (laughs) I have. My mom and my sisters, my brothers have, my daddy. But I just remember walking up and he, him smiling and embracing me and saying, meal, meal, you know. um, So, yeah, uh, just uh, good memories of my Uncle Butch. And I just wanted to, uh, you know, talk about him quickly on here and say shout out to once again to uncle butch yeah Uh, his children his wife and yeah Uh, everybody everybody that was connected to him absolutely yes indeed and that's all i have for what What you you know know good all righty then moving right along we'll go ahead and jump into the topic so baby talk to the people what the topic for the day going to be? Get the people what they want. Huh. All right. Brandon had a scare. Men's health. Y'all know sometimes I be trying to come up with like a play on words. This one was hard. And then I didn't want to have like death in the thing because death is, it, it, it's, it, yeah. So. But to be realistic. To be realistic. Yeah. I almost died. Yeah. Um. So this is Brandon's story time about, um. His second blood transfusion in the last five, five years. years. Yeah. So. so let me start by saying this. When your body talks to you. Talk back. <laughs> listen. <laughs> your body tells you certain things. Mm-hmm. It will communicate certain deficiencies yes. or insufficiencies yeah. or... Um, your body will talk to you. Yeah. We got to listen to our bodies because I'm going to tell you this. If you wait until your body is about to shut down, when you get into that dog on emergency room, waiting on them doctors, oh, you just might die. So with that, I'm going to pause because we, first, I'm going to call you out really quickly because when we were getting ready to go to the emergency room, you took your dag on time. I didn't want to go. He didn't want to go. I didn't think it was as serious as it was. And it bothered me. So I I know people might say, well, Camille, you, it's your husband. Yeah, he's my husband. You can't tell a person what to do. Especially not me. <laughs> you can't <laughs> tell. A, like I can tell him what to do. But like my mama would be telling me, go see the doctor. I'd be like, all right. Okay. <laughs> she did. Okay. I got you. Next time we talk about it. Did you go to the doctor? Uh, no, I feel better. But um, just because you feel better in that in that time doesn't mean doesn't you mean are better. Anything. And so, um, yeah. So, first off, he took his time. Um, I was waiting because me and the girls were in the middle of lesson, and he said he was gonna eat something. I'm gonna put you on blast again. Um, DoorDash had charged the <laughs> the card. This man is on the phone talking about they charged me. I'm like. You're supposed to be getting ready to go <laughs> to the I ER, need my money back. man. You worried about money? You dying? Like, and I'm saying that because he was dying. He was hunched over like the hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> so we went to this um, 
private place. And I was like, aunt, no. So then we go to the ER, to the emergency room at the hospital. Yeah. And we checked in about 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 one thirty ish. One thirty ish. About one thirty ish. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't as close to death as uh we waited for a very long time. They drew his blood. They did an EKG. They did everything, but we were sitting there. We were sitting there waiting, and it was about around 6.30. I have notes, y'all. Around 6.30, this man comes out and told, was he a nurse? He was the doctor. He Oh. In his regular clothes. Oh. With his spirits on. Mm. That was the doctor, the little guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was the doctor. Made me upset. That's when Brandon, because Brandon looked like he was in distress. He looked back at me. I was ready to cuss that man out. That's it. That's why Brandon and I, and I had my little, you know, I had my little w moment. But at 630, the doctor now came out and told that his paper, Brandon's papers hadn't even been looked at. They were just still. No, sick. not my papers. Your what? My your, your, blood, your blood was sitting in the lab and they hadn't done anything with it from 130 to, to 630. 30. But what bothered me is he shrugged it off like it was nothing. So I get it. I get y'all are understaffed. I get there's not enough people working. But you playing with somebody's life, and it was a shrug, and then he had the nerve to tell me. I thought it was over it because, you know, my husband's taken care of. But he said, it's um, it's a free world. It, you're free to leave. Yeah, and I walk out that door, and then you're not liable. But as long as I'm sitting in this ER, you're li you are you are liable if but I don't anything think, happens to I my husband. I don't think the liability comes off of them if I leave because they know about it. But you would leave. You're not in their care. Yeah, yeah. So I. And so that's when I was like, uh, uh, we're not going anywhere. We're staying here because if anything happens to Brandon, oh baby, you mm. best believe. And that's how my mind works. I'm not, and I don't be knowing no scared crap. It be on some. But you're free to leave. Oh yeah. So you're giving me the option. Yeah. He did. This is why we need to like record stuff that people be saying because it's like people be, and I think people be trying to play you because you black and yeah. they be thinking that I ain't I ain't saying race is everything, but in this case, anyway. And so, um, we were in the ER waiting room and there was people on IVs in the waiting room. There was only one bathroom. There's people throwing up. There's COVID is still real. These people, these people got stuff coming out the coming front out and the, the front back. And the back. I don't know what type of you know. My girls got to go in this Man, bathroom. The all girls you hear in the bathroom. Was, <laughs> 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 oh my god. god! Our girls were with us. Um, the nurse, this one nurse, was very rude. After a while, she did adjust her attitude. I don't know if somebody said anything to her or what, but she she adjust. I'm getting a little loud. I'm sorry. I'm getting excited. Um, she was rude. There was people coming in hurting bad, making all types of noise. Like, God doggy. Like, really? they were, I thought, I, <laughs> and let, let me Look. tell you, I'm looking around at these people, and I'm thinking, like, these people are very bad off. Brandon's but sitting here about to die. Come to find out, it's <clears throat> I was the worst one. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was the worst one in there mm -hmm. because while everybody else was having issues, I was having life threatening problems at the time. And like we said, it took them what? Five hours, five hours. to finally let me know that my blood levels were significantly lower than what they should have been. And this is the reason why I was having the issues that I was having. Mm -hmm. So my symptoms were this. And I'm going to tell you straight off the bat. They are stroke symptoms. So when you have a stroke, first thing to go is your left side. I know a couple of people who had strokes, and it's always that left side that goes first. So first symptom I was having was a numb arm. My whole arm, on my whole left arm, was it felt numb, and it felt like somebody had been hanging on it for six months. Um, my next symptom was it was hard as a Mickey Ficky to breathe. 
especially when I tried to lay down. Um, my next symptom was my chest felt like somebody was compressing it. So when I went in there and explained these symptoms to the doctor and I, um, me not knowing, um, or not even paying attention to my body, didn't realize that food allergies, which I thought it was at first, um, do not register that high in your diaphragm. So what they moved, I didn't understand what the doctor t- was saying when he said that, but your diaphragm is your body. Mm-hmm. So with food allergies, they tend to stay from the stomach down. Mm-hmm. So your stomach, legs, feet, all of that there. So when I explained my symptoms to him, he was like, there's no way possible, maybe a slim chance that, a food allergy would have registered this high in your diaphragm. Cause like I say, I was having problems with my chest, arm and my breathing. Um, so after these five hours, he decided he, he, he would come out and he didn't even come to me. I walked up to him and asked him about the blood. Just like bro, I understand what's going on here. I understand y'all got a lot going on, but, uh, how long is it going to take until my blood work gets done? Well, sir, we just found out that your blood levels are five and a half. Your hemoglobin levels are five and a half. Mind you, someone my size and my age, their hemoglobin levels are between the 12 and the 15. Mm-hmm. So if I'm at a five and a half, which means I'm probably closer to death than I have ever been, mm-hmm. why are we taking our time? Mm-hmm. Why was I not notified of this earlier? earlier. Why is my blood work just sitting in the doggone lab? Mm -hmm. Is it because I'm black? Because I see y'all working extra hard for all of these these, uh, counterparts in here. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. I'm glad I wasn't, I'm I'm glad I wasn't at a two. Mm -hmm. Because I probably, my heart probably would have shut down on me. Mm -hmm. And that's what my heart was, it was begging for For blood. blood. And that's where the the numb feeling, the the hard to breathe, the chest, all of that comes Without from. Blood, there's no oxygen. My, there's nothing. There's nothing to to to. So my heart is trying to is trying to pump, but there's, there's nothing, nothing to pump. No supply. Mm-hmm. And what through what really thought me made me think I was okay is because my blood pressure registered as yeah, normal. Yeah, came out. My blood pressure is fine. But there's, so, still, there's still something wrong. Yes, it's pumping. But it's not enough inside of me to pump properly in order to give the oxygen and all of the things to my extremities that is needed. And you want to walk around and go up hills and crap. Sit. I get it. It's uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable to try to sit down and you can't. And your body is is giving you issues. It, it, It seems more logical to try to. I get it. But you work it out. Yeah. And so um, then he comes back like we had um, shout out to sister-in-law for bringing us food and everything. Yes, and, um, he comes back and he's like, he start, they start doing all the everything. I feel everything that they should have done probably like three thirty in the beginning. In, in the beginning, <laughs> they come out and they start doing it. We 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 don't have a they didn't have a bed to admit him yet, but then everything just started rolling. Yeah, because I think then that became an urgency. If oh yeah, once happened, they figured out <laughs> that, that that yeah, once they figured out that I was out that without mm-hmm. proper care. Yeah, I was gonna. F- Speedily decline. Yeah, and I was about to look because I wasn't. And the thing about it, I thought I was try, just trying to keep the girls okay. But I was just like, I have to stay here. I have to stay here until yeah. he is. Until I know that you know everything is is good. Yeah. And that was it's 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 a scary feeling. It's a tiring feeling. I can only imagine how the girls feel, but. Like Brandon is saying, you need y'all listen to your bodies. Don't Please. wait to the last minute because it was when did you do that shutdown that that job? Brandon had been work uh, had a moment. <laughs> I was what, sick on that sick shutdown. On that, you were sick on that shutdown, and I went to work and you anyway. Went to work hurting, and then I guess the pain. I don't know what the happened. pain subsided. It, 
So I thought it was all good. And you so, probably was low, like I was. I'm saying the, I had the, the same, same symptoms. symptoms. And it was it was That's crazy. It's, it's weird. Um, so why we're talking about this is because this is not Brandon's first transfusion. Um, we I think we kind of kept the first one on the low because we didn't want everyone to know. Um, this time around, I was like, uh, uh-uh, I'm in my group. I'm in my family group chat. Look, huh? <laughs> yeah. Brandon's in here. This is what's happening. And the first transfusion was in 2017. So it was December 5th, 2017. Um, Brandon was at work. Brandon was literally about to die. I was about to die. <laughs> I was worse off being than I am saying, now. And I know y'all saying, like, don't say. Brandon was about to die. Yeah. If I would have waited either one of these times probably another day, I'm not too sure I'll be here right now. Um, the first time he had to be transported in an ambulance. An ambulance. An ambulance. Um, he went in on the 5th. They just, like, settled him in and everything. And what's crazy is this, that when I go in the, when I went in the first time, just like this time, they, they keep asking me, do I feel faint? Yeah. Uh, are you okay? Yeah. Um, they even told, they put an alarm on my bed so I wouldn't get up. So if I turn too far to the right, Alarm be like, don't get up. You are on bed rest. Uh, <laughs> a nurse is coming to your aid. So, yeah, it was serious. Um, I may laugh about these things and don't post a uh, serious post about all these things, but I'm going to tell you this, almost died. Seriously, no bull jive, almost died twice. And... I want to just put this on not just men, but women as well. Listen to your bodies. They give us these signs. They are mechanisms within us that will trigger when things aren't right. So whether you, whether it's your stomach, your back, whatever it may be, your, your body will let you know when there is a problem. It is on us. It is our responsibility to listen to what our body is telling us so we won't go into a, a, a sudden decline. And it ain't even sudden. It, because, like it's I say, over time. exactly. Just, I've been having these issues for quite some time, and I just ignored them. Or, like I say, it'll get better, and I think it's all good. But that's not the case. Things do not get better on their own. And you just a little. It. You uh, have to yeah, work at it. yeah, absolutely. Right. Just a little backstory um, on why I need the transfusions or why my blood is so low. <clears throat> I have what they call polyps. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure if because I didn't even know what they was until my daddy explained it to me because he has he has an issue with them as well. Mm-hmm. But polyps are like little, uh, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. They grow in your colon, and what mine are doing are seeping blood. Um, so with that, blood, um, I pass blood through my stool. And that's where my uh, all of my low, I mean, all of my uh, hemoglobin or the red blood cells of my blood are going to. So when I so, go to the restroom every now and again, I look down and I see blood passing. There are a small clump of cells that forms on the lining of the colon or the rectum. So we have a lot of them. Yes. Um, how do we know? Because he did have a colonoscopy, colonoscopy. and an endo- endoscopy. Endoscopy. Well, I call them an endo and an outdo. He did have those in 2017. And I remember the doctor coming and sitting me down. And letting me know that polyps can, you can remove them. I think they have removed some of them. They have removed the, some of the smaller ones. Um, that, But they can become cancerous. So this is why this is a big deal. Yes, they're uh, absorbing, taking his blood and whatever. But if we, if we don't watch it and his intake and what he's eating and everything, they can become cancerous. Um, so, it, it, yeah, it's uh, that's the underlining 
thing of issue, it, the of, issue of why it. I'm anemic, mm-hmm. why I am losing blood, yeah, um, and why I had to get the transfusions. Yeah. Um, so when in 2017, when we did have the first, well, not me, when Brandon had the transfusion, um, we did in 2018, we did change the way we started eating. Um, we cut out beef. We cut out um, it was more home cooked meals. And then I like to th- I think like when the pandemic came around, that's when we started back in with the meat and everything. Fast, and fast food, food, all of that. And when he couldn't eat Chick-fil-A, he couldn't do Whataburger. Yo, I love his, I like me a number one. I like some Chick-fil-A. But his body was not taking it. Um, and his body was sensitive to processed foods. Which is it? Go, it's going. It's not the polyps and everything. The food the is food processed, but food. my body can't process it. So he needs natural, you know, things and 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 um, all of that. So we cut out, and so we're about to cut out a lot of things. Yeah, again and, and well. doctors tend to tell you they. All right, when you go to the doctor, they always ask you about your family history. Yeah. The reason for that is they want to be able to tie what your problem is to a family member's problem to make you think that it's hereditary. Right. But the only thing that is hereditary is our eating habits. Mm -hmm. The only thing that passes through uh, uh, us or the, the only reason why we're experiencing the same symptom as those before us is because we're eating the same things. Right. We're putting the same things in our body, and we're expecting different results. Right. You're right. There's no – this stuff don't be hereditary. We just have to change what we intake, mm-hmm. and our outcomes will be different. Yeah. So You're right. take heed to that. Mm-hmm. Your doctor wants to be able to link it to something so it make you think that things – Pass from generation to generation, and then they put you on prescription, or yeah. and you we will, and will say my my mama had this, and she was on, and then they'll prescribe, you know. But I I'm not saying all medicine is bad medicine, yeah. but what for we, every medicine, there's something there's out something there natural else. that that does the same thing. Yeah, and they they sometimes they'll even prescribe you things that you don't need. Like mm-hmm. I kept telling these people, I have. Um, polyps mm-hmm. and that's where my blood is going to but they prescribed me stomach ulcer medicine for what my stomach is not bleeding you clearly seen that on the the, the scan or whatever them things because all, all them tests i don't know what them things be called i just do them i know they do one where you they stick you inside a thing and then it mm-hmm. spins around you i think that's a uh a, a cat scan know. Is that a cat scan? Uh, EKG is where they set you harder to, to put all the things on your on your your body, and um, I did another one, an X ray of my lungs. Your lungs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, and another thing, another uh, what they did find out is I suffer from constipation. Yeah. And that's probably from my water intake. Maybe I need some more water. Who tells you to drink water all the time? Maybe I. Maybe Who tells I, you that? Maybe I just I need a little bit more What's water. What's her name? Yeah, I, I wonder. Know. Who looks at you crazy all, all the time? You don't know. I don't okay. know, but yeah, um, we got to drink our water. We have to drink our water, and really, this this episode is really just awareness, so we know that. If something ain't right, our body will tell us. And with that, we have to do take the proper steps in order to do what's necessary to get our body back in sync with what it with how it should be. So listen, listen, listen. Communication. It's like I put on a, a Facebook today. Communication in all relationships is key. So even with your body, your body talk to you, you need to talk back to it and show your appreciation for your body by going to get checked out. This life, this body is temporary. It's temporary. It is very temporary. So we need to do whatever we can to keep that as long as possible. So, hey, just listen to your body. 
Um, it'll tell you what it wants, what it needs. Um, don't ignore the symptoms. Go see a doctor. And don't wait too late. Because if you go in there and you're about to die, you're probably going to die on their flow because they're going to take forever. Who they take forever. And it's because. Yeah. It, uh, so just listen to your body. Listen to your body. I know sometimes it's, it's hard. But, yeah, listen to your body. Watch what you're putting in. Drink more water. Read the back of labels on these Tylenols, these ibuprofens, these aspirin. Read what you're putting into your body. Although a doctor is saying, hey, this is good. It might not be. Um, I have to get back to cooking meals, these fresh meals. And if you know me, you know I do not like to cook. Hmm. But We're going to look into some kind of meal prep. Yeah, but for the sake of helping my husband again, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to keep him here as long as possible. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yeah. So that is going to wrap up our episode of um, Brandon's health and men's health, <laughs> as well as Brandon's women's health. health. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, before we go ahead and get on up out of here, because um, <sighs> we're on our way out of there. That was some good information. Uh, make sure y'all take heed to what's going on with yourselves. And um, before we go ahead and get up out of here, we're going to head and bust you in the head one time for your mind with On This Day in Black History. So, on this day, which is March the 7th of 1965. What is it? All right. <laughs> Bloody Sunday occurred. Civil rights protector, protesters, activists like John Lewis tried to march from Selma, Alabama to Montgomery, Alabama, but were attacked by state troopers who used billy clubs and tear gas to attack the activists. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should know what we're talking about. Absolutely. And there's a movie that Ava DuVernay did, Selma, um, and it shows there's a documentary where John Lewis is talking about what happened. I didn't know it was called Bloody Sunday. I didn't either. I didn't know that. I didn't. So that's. Um, but um, if you ain't up on your history, go ahead and check that out. Uh, John Lewis, um, very instrumental in the civil rights movement. Um, if the, I mean, he stood right beside Martin Luther King and all the rest of them. And during this Bloody Sunday was the. Um, <clears throat> There was something going on between Dr. Martin Luther King and Coretta Scott King, so he had went back home to be with her. So he missed this, hmm. and they went on without him, if you watch um, Selma. But, yeah, it's interesting to know this, but I didn't know it was called Bloody Sunday. Absolutely. But, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get on up out of here. We appreciate, once again, everybody who tunes in to our uh, podcast Everybody who shows us love will continue to show the love back. We're going to be here next Monday with a hot new topic. Find us on all podcast streaming platforms. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Help us grow because uh, we're here to stay. We ain't going nowhere. Absolutely. So um, y'all keep that in mind when uh, y'all checking us out. And uh, we're going to be around. So, um Y'all continue to have a blessed day, and we'll see y'all next week. Bye. Peace.